Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Uh, something a little bit different for a change. Uh, I've got this piece of walnut, it's still rather wet. It's been sat outside on my decking for probably about the last 18 months. And you can see there I've got some slight cracks and it looks like the pith has, on, even on this small branch, has actually started wearing through there. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to chop a section of this off on the bandsaw just to see what the end's like, just to see if I can get a blank out of there to start with. Now I've cut a section off here, as you can see I've got no cracks, but I do have that hole for the pith. And I'm going to worry about that later on. Um, it's really weird because it's almost like a, a sap that runs through there, and it's obviously just what's gone over time. Now this is still really wet. I mean, I'm showing 22% on the bottom here where I've just cut. Now the good thing about turning between centers is that you can mount this to wherever you like the center to be. I'm gonna probably use this as the top. So I will turn a tenon on here once I've got this all trued up. I still yet have another knot here where the pith hole is so this could prove interesting uh, even though this is walnut it's actually fairly light wood uh, I'll cut my tenon on here now so that's how I'm going to mount it in the jaws as I was going along I was actually moving the center at this end because I found that I was going to be um, taking too much wood out of one side rather than the other so my first job here is going to be just going to true this up a little bit better and then I'm going to start hollowing out the inside how deep I'm going to go is yet I don't know um, I'll just probably get rid of this knot here so I may come down a little bit that one I can't really do anything about it's going to be there but my end up overall piece I suspect is going to probably be somewhere around there bring up the tail stock support and the best way of doing this is usually to spin the lathe up and then bring the live centre in. It just balances itself a lot better on the live centre. Actually, fact, I decided to start with, I'm going to go over this with the skew just to see what it comes up like. Right, I'm going to change this around now and I'm going to hollow out the inside. Now I just took the tailstock away and you can just see there that's the main pith that was running through here. So I'm just going to flatten this end off and I'm going to probably use a small force and a bit just to drill a hole. I'm just going to use my hollowing tool here. I am going to make this wider because like I say I want to get rid of that pith.
change over to my other hollowing tool here so that I can just get in under the lip here. Well, I'm just going to use a, another drill bit so I can drill down to the depth I want to get. So that's now gone fairly thin now. I have hollowed the inside out as far as I'm going to go. Now I've sanded this to 240 grit inside and out. And the way I do the inside is I use a pair of forceps with sandpaper on. I want to darken this up an awful lot. So I have, first of all, I've loosened the chuck off because I want to work on the inside. And what I'm going to do is, if you'd watched my Christmas videos, If not, just go back and have a look. You'll see that I used these walnut crystals. And what it is, is some crystals I bought, which you just dilute down into water. And depending on how many, how much crystals to water you put in as to how dark it comes out. What I want to do is, I might well just end up pouring this inside. I'm just going to paint all the inside here. Now this wood is obviously was fairly wet at about 20% in places. So we're at about 7%, 7.5% there, 10% there. And I'll just give this a coating as well now. Now, as, as the wood dries again, the grain will rise as I get the moisture in there. So I'm going to let this dry off properly. I will sand that back. And I should probably then give it more coats. Now, what I've done here, I, after I sanded this to 240, I then gave it another coat of the colouring, let it dry, sand that to 320, gave it another coat of colouring, let it dry, did the same for 400 and after I'd sanded to 600 this has now had probably about three or four coats of colouring which is why we've got patches of shiny bits, patches of dull bits and this is really smooth by cutting back the grits every time it just takes those out those fibres which are just trying to raise every time it gets a bit of moisture on it. What I want to do now is I want to try and get rid of most of this shiny bit and cut it back a little bit because it's just too black. And all I'm going to try first of all is a bit of scotch pad. So that's now a lot better. It's still got a fair bit of black in there. But you've got the brown coming through. Earlier this year, I went across the border to see a fellow woodturner, Wayne the Woodturner. If you're not a subscriber to him, please do go over and subscribe because he does some absolute wonderful work. And while I was there, he showed me how to make, and he, well, in actual fact, he made this for me, which hopefully I'm just showing a picture on the side here, which is where I've really come from this idea from. Now, Wayne actually used the a piece of ash and he used the chestnut ebonizing lacquer on there which dries fairly quickly. What Wayne did for his colourers, he bought well he was using the, the, the Joe Sonja um, iridescent paints, which I have now gone off and bought the entire range. Because they're a fairly thick paint, you need to also get the flow medium. 
which basically waters them down and thins them up. You can use water, but it can be rather unpredictable, whereas something like this dilutes the paints properly. What I'd like to try first of all, I want to put a gold base down so that I can then, once that's dried, try another colour on top. Now I've mixed up some paint here, the gold, and I've thinned it down a bit with a flow medium. And I've just got my string soaked in there. Now I've used a fairly thick sort of bristly string here. So it's going to be interesting to see what this comes out like. And I don't know whether I've even got enough on there now. Because I don't think the string is... See, the string is not sticking, which this really is going to be for the background. And you can see, hopefully see on the camera now, where the gold is really all showing up, where it's already dried. Make sure it's all pushed down this time. And you can see the string has actually got a fair bit of shape to it. Which is probably why this doesn't give such a good coverage. I'll just make sure the string's all fully down this time. So that one's actually come out a lot better coverage than what those two have and I think that's because the, the string has got softer um, which as I said these are going to be more of a background so I'm going to li leave these to dry properly now. Now these two are still drying because they've got really thick pieces of paint on them. Um, I've got a few bristles sticking out from the string but this other one has actually dried fully now and I couldn't find any th thin string but what I've found is some wool. Uh, the good thing about wool is it's really soft and it goes wherever you decide to pull it. So this may work a lot better than string. Now this time I've gone for the violet colour. And again I'm not sure whether I have enough paint in here but I have well and truly soaked the wool in it. So if we pull this out and then place this where I want it, I'm just going to push it down in place. So it does grab onto the piece. And that's the sort of thing that I wanted. You can see the purple has mostly gone off now. That's given that double effect pattern. These ones still haven't fully gone off because they're so thick, but I'm going to carry on anyway. Um, and what I've done this time is a red. Just push those down because then they will stick better and pull the paint along. And I think where I've done wrong in the past is I've 
held my finger down the bottom here which pulls all the paint down so I'm gonna alter this as I go along Now I could increase that with a lot more paint on there um, or even go over it again. I'm going to go for blue on the last one. Now you can do all sorts of patterns on here. You can do loops which will create different effects. Just pulling that right down. So I'm now going to leave that all to dry off properly and then I can give this a spray lacquer and then finally part it off. So that is just a bit dried, uh, not sure about the blue, certainly like the purple and I don't think the red is prominent enough on there, could probably have done with some more. But I'm just going to finish this off with some ordinary spray lacquer. And that takes about 15, 20 minutes to dry till it's touched dry. And I'll probably end up giving that another one or two coats before I then part it off. Now I've just given that a couple of coats of the spray lacquer. Uh, it dries really quickly, part it off, just sanded the bottom off and signed it and dated and put the wood on there. So this is another experiment. Uh, something you never really see me do on the channel is this sort of coloring. Now I've got to say that using the walnut crystals um in this case i think i probably put it on a little bit too thick i would have liked uh, a slightly lighter brown on here rather than it being so dark because it is uh it does come up reasonably black as well color wise uh the first the gold well using this string as you can see it's got like a life of its own where it's shaped to it stays in that shape so it's quite a coarse string which might not be the best thing, but at the same time, you, it could be something for your advantage. And when I did the gold on there, as you see when I did that, it was very sparse because it was lifting up off, off the piece. Now, having those blank pieces isn't so much a problem, obviously, unless you want to cover the whole piece. Now, I was using the gold as the background. I always had intended to do the two colors. Now, the purple, I think, has come out really, really nice. It contrasts with the, the gold really nicely. Uh, the blue isn't so bad um i think it could be a lot better but the red i think is actually lost in the gold but when i changed over to the wall uh, i got more of the pattern that i wanted now the good thing about doing the paint as well is it's added a texture to it so this now has a texture all around and especially these bits down here where i've got the build up of the paint so yes this is far from perfect don't mind the shape so much the painting total experimentation so for a first effort on this i'm quite pleased about it but there are, i think there's an awful lot for improvement at the same time as well just the way you lay your string on how much paint you put on there can give such different patterns every time so hopefully this has given you some thought for ideas maybe have a go off at something like this yourself maybe you've already done something like this uh, please let us know thanks a lot for watching and i'll see you on the next project video